The Dake Study Bible is recognized as the most comprehensive and important examination of the scriptures ever created. If you love the Word of God, make sure to get this amazing Bible. Containing more resources for personal study than any other Bible, this ultimate tool for understanding God's Word can be yours today for only $125. Invest in your Christian life by getting the best Bible on earth. And every preacher I know has the Dig Bible because they know the value of it. Don't miss this opportunity to get your own copy of the Dig Study Bible or give it as a gift to a loved one or friend. Call or order online now. Look to our precious Jesus today who saves, heals, delivers, prospers, and blesses. This is your day for a miracle. Mike Smalley, president of World Reach Ministries in Rockwall, Texas, is one of America's most dynamic and sought after speakers. He has conducted thousands of services and business seminars in more than 40 nations, challenging audiences to reach for and apply the wisdom of God. And he has a special word for you today. I am so glad Mike Smalley is here. Are you doctor or pastor or? Doctor, evangelist, <laughs> Mike, doctor, whatever. Evangelist. Listen, listen. <laughs> He is really class. This gentleman is just anointed. The last time you came here, I still remember, I was kind of stunned by your presentation. You know, God's people want to prosper. Yes, they do. And very few of you on earth know how to stir our faith. Yeah. You know, uh, the one area the devil attacks is this one. It's, it's because he's scared of it. Right. Very much so. And I want you to talk to us because I really believe the Lord has sent you here to give that blessed word because I know everything in my heart knows that God is about to bless his people. Yes, absolutely. It's so key, isn't it, just to, to fulfill the Great Commission, to care for our family. We have to have the provision of God to spread talk the to message they're, they're of God. They're right there, please. I'm so excited today to be here with Pastor Benny, and I know it's no accident that you're listening to me right now. And I want you to grab yeah. a pen and get a piece of paper. I really believe if the Lord delays His coming, today is going to be a day you look back on in the weeks and months to come, and you say, that was a turning point day wow. when the Holy Spirit brought a word into my heart. You know, when God speaks, it changes us. It's impossible for God to talk to us and our spirit not to be changed. Absolutely. And as you're sitting there at your home, or maybe you're watching on a road trip in a motel, maybe you're in the hospital, maybe you're watching over the Internet. I, I don't know how the Holy Spirit's made it possible for you and I and Pastor Benny to have these moments, but here's what I know. I know God loves you, Amen. and He has sent us here today to share a word to you. Amen. God has put His word in our mouth to share with you today. You know, there's a lot of people that you can talk to every day, and there's social media now, there's Twitter, there's Facebook, there's all these different things that didn't exist 10, 15 years ago. But how many of you know the pain of being ignored? All of us know, especially if you've got teenagers, you know what it's like to talk to a child and feel like they're not even listening. You know what it's like to share your heart with someone you love, and there's not a quality response in return. But when we talk to God, all wisdom, all love, all patience, all power. When Jesus told us in John 16, 24, you can ask the Father anything in my name. If you believe, he'll answer you. You know why that is, family? Because when we pray in the name of Jesus, we're legally praying in the place of Jesus. So the Father hears us as if Jesus himself is doing the asking. So right now, I'm just going to pray a brief prayer and ask God to take the next few moments and whatever Satan has planned to attack your mind, your emotions, we're going to set it at ease right now. We're going to speak the peace of God over your life. And I'm going to share with you three voices God never ignores. Wouldn't you like to know what three things, no matter what's happening on the earth, God will never ignore these three voices. It's powerful. It's going to change your life. Today Man, is a very bad day for the devil in your life. Pray with me right now. Father, we take authority over everything that hinders us from standing in your complete will and grace right now. Father, we rebuke every attack over our mind, our emotions, our finances, our family, we submit ourselves to you completely today and embrace everything you did for us at the cross. And we decree today 
is a turning point day for the partnership family of this incredible ministry. In Jesus' name, it is done. Amen. Write these down right there at your house. Number one, three things, three voices God never ignores. Number one, the voice of the blood. Write that down. The voice of the blood. Remember when Cain and Abel were fighting among themselves and Cain killed his brother? And he left the scene of the crime and God spoke and said, Where is your brother Abel? And, Abel, and Cain says, You know, hey, am I my brother's keeper, Lord? That famous line. You know, when God, Pastor Benny, asks a question, it's not because he needs the information. He's wanting us to think about something. So yeah. when Jesus said to the, to the followers, Who do men here say that I am? He knew. He was trying to push them to something, to see something. So when God said to Cain, Where is your brother Abel? Then he said, The voice of his blood... It's crying out to me from the ground. The blood has a voice. When you look all through the Word of God, blood was shed by a lamb in, in, in the sacrifice of Abel, and God was pleased with it, and the blood saved one man that day. You progress further. Abraham raised a knife over Isaac, and God said, No, stop. There's a sacrifice here in the, in the bushes. Use that instead. And on that day, the shed blood benefited one family. Then in Exodus, when we have the Passover blood, that blood shed saved an entire nation, covered a nation, and God's death angel passed over. Then in Isaiah 53, he prophesied one day the Lamb of God would become a human being. And in John, the Bible said John the Baptist looked up one day and said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin, not of one man, Jesus. not of one family, not of one nation. Wonderful. He'll take away the sin of the world. Wow. Acts chapter 10 talks about the death and resurrection of the Lamb. First Peter in the book of Revelation talk about the glory of the Lamb, the city of the Lamb, the kingdom of the Lamb. Why? The blood has a voice. No matter what you've gone through, no matter what divorce you've experienced, the bankruptcy you've had, what you said when you lost your temper, all of the things you're ashamed of, that's what the blood is for. It washes us clean so we can stand pure before God. And when Satan accuses us of our past, the voice of the blood says, shut up. This one's saved. This one's redeemed. Amen, this one's Lord. holy. Amen. Family, no matter what you've gone through, be confident today. There are no skeletons in your closet. Because your closet's been washed in the blood of the Lamb. The blood has a voice God never ignores. That's awesome. Number two, the second thing I want you to write down today, and I'm talking about if you just joined us, the three voices God always listens to. Number two is the voice of His children. Write that down. Mm. Did you know Jesus said you can't even give a cup of cold water to one of His children okay. and not receive a promised reward? You can't even give a cup of cold water without God watching and rewarding. All through the Scripture, the Bible says that God hears the cry of the righteous and He's attentive to their plea. Think of you and I as an as a earthly parent, how you, would, you wouldn't do anything, uh, allow anybody to harm your child. A month ago at 4 a.m., I had to call the police because an intruder was trying to get into my home at 4 a.m. My children were in that house. I immediately grabbed a gun, called the police. Why? Because I'm a father. I will do anything to protect my children. When one of them cries out, I respond. Well, if you and I would respond, think of what our Heavenly Father does, who loved us so much He sent His only begotten Son to die on the cross for our Amen. sins. All through the Scripture, God says, He hears the cry of the righteous. There's something powerful. When you're wounded at your deepest level, when you don't know what to do about the, uh, another major decision that's facing you, when the stress level seems too hard to bear, when the people you love the most don't want anything to do with your life anymore, they're threatening to leave or walk out, and you don't know what tomorrow can look like, you can cry out to God, and He will never, ever ignore you. You can call the governor of your state, but guess what? <laughs> you're not getting through. You can call the White House. You're not getting through. But 24 hours a day, seven days a week, you can cry out to Jesus. You can cry out to God. It doesn't matter what you've done. God never consults your past to make decisions about your future. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. The thief next to Jesus, sinning his entire life and hanging next to Jesus for nine solid hours, didn't even ask to be saved. He said, I deserve this. So when I go where I'm going and you go where you're going, just don't forget about me. I accept my punishment. I just don't want to be forgotten. And Jesus said, it'd be hard to forget a man I'm bringing with me. Today, you're going where I'm going. You'll be with me in paradise. Why? He cried out. God will always respond to the cry of a hungry heart. The other thief next to Jesus for nine hours, 
Jesus hangs next to him. He sees that he's going to hell. He's, he's two hours away. He's one hour away. He's 30 minutes away. And Jesus is actually dying for the man in front of him. And there's not one recorded word that Jesus ever even spoke to the man, which is fascinating that he saved one and never spoke to the other. Why? Because he loved one, hated the other? No. It's because even God can't help a non-reacher. Mm. And one thief never pursued, never asked, never reached. One man sinned his entire life. He's being executed by the Roman government. And he says one right sentence. And God changes his entire eternal destination. You don't have to pray for 12 hours. You don't have to fast for 40 days. Just cry out to God right where you Smart. are. Help me, Jesus. Save me, Jesus. Direct me, Jesus. He will never ignore the cry of his child. The third thing that God will never ignore is the voice of a seed. The voice of a seed. This is one of the most powerful principles on the earth. And I feel a real anointing to pray for you in just a few minutes. And I'm going to tell you how to get a gift copy of a book I've written that's going to change your world called How to Prosper in Hard Times God's Way. But before I pray this prayer, you must write down the next few sentences that I direct you to. And I'm going to wrap my prayer around your heart and life because God's about to change your, the seasons of your life are about to radically change. God never ignores the voice of a seed. You know, Pastor Benny, one of the greatest verses in the Old Testament, so overlooked, is in Genesis 8, where God said, as long as the earth remains, I'll run the world off of seed, time, and harvest. He said, as long as we're still here, there'll be summer and winter, cold and heat, seed, time, and harvest. No such thing as sowing and reaping. It's sowing, waiting, and reaping. Seed, time, harvest. God told us how to bring anything into our life we needed by taking a portion of what we presently had and trusting Him with it so He could multiply it back to us. Look at the fish and the bread with the little child. Only little, little mother sent the boy off to, to play for the day. Had no idea we'd be talking about her lunch that she packed 2,000 years later. They brought bread and fish to Jesus and He fed 15,000 people with it. Why? He's the master multiplier. Mm. He said, if I have faith, just tiny faith. He didn't even address my big faith. Think of God never addressed what you could do with big faith in the Bible. He That's just right. said, if you just had faith the size of a mustard seed, you'd be moving mountains. Think about all that God wants to do through you and I if we'll just work with our faith. I'll never forget years ago sitting at a really broken place in my life. I had been called to preach when I was 14 and I was 30. I was just starting to travel internationally as an evangelist, and I was fulfilling the dreams and goals I'd had since I was a kid. We were going to Africa and planting churches, and we've started 69 churches in Africa now, and we were just starting back then with our first one or two, and I had a medical problem in my throat. I went to the voice doctor of Ronald Reagan, who was an expert in his field, and he looked at me and said, you may not have a ministry, you may not ever be able to preach again, you may be done. He said, don't speak for three weeks. Don't even say hello to your kids. Don't whisper. Don't, don't talk on the phone. He said, go totally silent for 21 days and come back to see me and we'll see what can be done. And I was devastated. Mm. If I can't talk, I can't preach, I can't witness, I can't worship, I can't share the gospel, I can't pray, I can't even say hello to my kids. Wow. Everything about it was, was devastating to me. And, and so at, I canceled all of my meetings, all of the partner meetings we had. All, we canceled everything. And at that time, we were hit from a thousand different angles and, and money flew out of accounts overnight. And I found myself almost literally broke within a month. I went into a depression I had never experienced before in my life. And I, I said, I've got to hear from God. So I heard a man of God was in a neighboring city preaching a revival. I said, I'll go. I'll just sit and just soak up God's word. Maybe God will talk to me. Mm. As I was sitting in the church, they went to receive an offering and I laughed. I said, I said, oh, that'll be for somebody else, but not me. I had no intention of giving in that offering. I had $1,000 left to my entire life. I had Whoa. drained every account. Nothing coming in. No hope that I would ever even be able to talk again. I couldn't even say hello to the oh. Lord when I woke up. Didn't know what would happen at the end of that month if I would ever be able to utter another word again. Mm. Sitting in that little place, praying in my mind, God, talk to me tonight. Show me my ministry. My life is not over. Wow. He spoke this back to me. I want you to plant a $500 seed in the offering and watch what I do. I died 10,000 deaths. Mm. 
Anybody that tells you it's always easy to hear from God has been saved 10 seconds or they're lying to you. Exactly. Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. So our problem is not that we can't hear from God. Wow. It's that our flesh sometimes doesn't want to cooperate with what we know we're hearing. And that was one of those days for me. I knew it was God, but I didn't want it to be. God, not now. Let me get back on my feet. Then I'll sow again. Don't, don't ask for half of all I've got left and what I've got left's not enough. That's when I begin to learn, family, that God never nudges us about a seed unless he's got a harvest on his mind. I had no intention of going into that church and giving that day. And God spoke to me and said, when you let go of something you never intended to give, I will let go of something I never intended to keep. God talked to me that night and said, all I'm asking for you is to trust me. All I'm asking is just to watch what I can do. And so I wrote out that check for $500, put it in the offering plate and plummeted into a depression. I left the building before I, I said, I've got to leave. I won't hear anything else that encourages me tonight. I went home. Three days later, a man I hadn't talked to in five years called me up out of the blue. He said, meet me for lunch. I've got to tell you what's happened to me. I did. Ray said, I broke my shoulder, got laid off from a job. Haven't had a paycheck in six months, but I found an expensive tool in my garage I forgot I had yesterday. Went to a pawn shop and they gave me $1,200. First income I've had from a family in six months. I went to go home to show it to my wife and God came in my car and said, find Mike Smalley and give him everything you just made today. Oh, and he began to cry and push 12 $100 bills across the table. My heart began to rejoice and at the same time I was broken for Ray because I could see the pain in his eyes. I took him by the hand and I prayed a prayer with him. I'm about to pray with you. And I said, Ray, the scripture said God's no respecter of persons. What he'll do for me, he'll do for you. The only reason God nudged you to sow today as he's about to release an incredible harvest. And I told Ray what God had just done for me through my obedience. I took him by the hand. He left my table, went and called his wife, who said, where have you been? I've been wanting to tell you that two hours ago, the disability insurance company we've been fighting for six months just randomly called out of the blue. So they didn't know what they'd been thinking, but they were wrong and we were right. And they wanted to confirm our address because they're overnighting the first of several checks for $5,000. Wow. I was so changed and touched by that. I went to a church on the following Sunday and told them what I just told you. A man came running up to me afterwards and he said, I sold everything I had nine months ago to start a business. It's on the verge of bankruptcy. All I've got left is $500. Do you think God would do it for me since he did it for you? I said, he has to or he's a liar. We joined hands. I prayed mm -hmm. over him. Within three hours, a millionaire from Michigan called him and said, I've heard about the work that you do. I've got big plans. I've got big needs. And she gave him more income in one day than he'd had the previous nine months combined with wow. every order that he had. And today, he has a thriving business. The next Sunday, I went to another church and a woman was sitting in the crowd whose husband had just died. They had a major piece of property that they needed to sell, and she'd had it for sale for months with no buyers, not even a single offer. She approached me and said, I heard about that seed of $500, how God changed your life the day you trusted him with it. Mm -hmm. Do you think God would do it for me? I said, absolutely. I took her by the hand and I prayed. By 8 o'clock that night, a stranger had knocked on her door, said, are you the owner of the property at such and such location? She said, yes. He said, I've been trying to find you for weeks. He said, I've got cash. I'll give you every penny that you're asking for. And within one hour, she had a check signed cashiers, and it was sold. I could tell you story after story after story. This $500 seed was a new beginning, a launching it's just five little $100 bills. It was so big to me at the time, Pastor Benny, because that's about all I had at the moment. But God changed my world. I went back to the doctor one month later. He looked down my throat, scratched his head, and said, I can't find a single thing wrong with you. I can't even find a trace of the problem. And I've been preaching in 40 nations ever since and traveling the world every week of my life because God never ignores the voice of a seed. That's awesome. So awesome. I went to another church. And a little lady was in the audience. She said, I've never been able to afford a home, but I found a rich person here in town that would carry the note for me because they owned a home outright. She said, I was going to put this $500 down on the down payment for the house, but God told me to sow it. She said, pray with me that God will give me favor when I call the man back. She got a lot of favor because when she called the man back, he said, you don't know me, but I'm a Christian. And when I was praying this weekend about whether to accept your offer to buy our house, God told my wife and I he was going to bless us in other ways and just to give it to you as a gift. And in 24 hours, she had a debt-free home from a $500 seed because God is the God 
of the harvest. Whenever we sow a seed wrapped in faith and call it in, God can't ignore it because anything linked to our faith is linked to His heart. When my seed moves me, it has to move God. Over and over in the Bible, He shows us when people have a crisis moment, God will talk to them and give them an instruction that's illogical to their common sense, but never impossible for them to use their faith to obey. And I feel right now that same anointing upon me to pray for you as I did when I prayed for Ray, when I prayed for Clara, when I prayed for Ricky and his wife. I feel that same stirring upon me right now like a financial deliverer to come into a covenant with you right there in front of your television or right there in front of your computer and to believe God to take you to a whole new level. You don't ever have to stay where you are. God never ignores the voice of a seed. When I thrust seed into God's hand, and we're all a walking life of seed. Wisdom is a seed. Our love is a seed. Our patience is a seed. Our offerings are a seed. And when you get busy with your life and stress pulls you to the right and the left, God still looks at what you've trusted Him with and He's getting in covenant with it to send it back to you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. And while I sit here next to Pastor Benny and I feel this anointing upon me right now, I want to pray for 300 miracles in the lives of 300 people. As you know, Gideon had the army of 300 that changed the face of his nation and the world your nation, my nation, our nations need changing through the power of God. And I want to use my faith right now to come into a covenant with you. And I'm asking God today for 300 miracles in the lives of 300 people who when Pastor Benny and I finish our special prayer, I'm going to ask you to go to the phone and I want you to plant this new beginning seed of $500. I want you to write today's date down in the back of the Bible. I want you to count off 90 days, and I want you to begin to journal the blessings of God over the next 90 days. I want you to wrap expectation around this seed. I'm going to ask God to let the first part of your harvest come within 72 hours. I don't know in what way God will send it, but when you and I lock into a covenant together, he's no respecter of persons. That's right. What he did for me and so many others, That's right. he can do for you right now. Father, in the name wow. of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, as Pastor Benny and I pray together for your sheep. Father, your sheep know your voice. They know the inner witness of the Holy Spirit. They know a divine moment that's pregnant with potential. And Lord, you're awaiting our divine yes so you can open the windows of heaven over our life and pour us out a blessing we don't have room enough to receive. Father, I come into a covenant right now for 300 miracles in the lives of 300 people who in just a moment will go to the phone and plant their new beginning seed of $500 into the work of the Lord. I come into a covenant with them for 90 days of hearing your voice. I come into a covenant for 90 days of supernatural joy and a new season of peace in their life. And I ask you, Father, in their lifetime for a 100-fold return because you promised anything we let go of for your sake in the Gospels. We would get it back in this lifetime 100-fold. Father, as you did it for me and all those I've talked about tonight, I come into a covenant with my friend right now. Quickly show them how fast you can take them to a new level. Father, I don't know if it's money we'd set aside for a rainy day or money we have moving from one account to the next, but I ask you today to anoint this seed of $500 and show us in the next 90 days your favor, your power, and your blessing. In Jesus' name, it is done. And pastors, the people go to the phone. I feel like the moment they begin reaching for the phone, the moment they even begin to reach for it, that's the first moment the Lord will begin to release the first wave of the harvest to their lives. Listen, this is I'm powerful. Feeling, and I'm not just saying it. I'm feeling a great anointing here. You've got to obey the word that you just heard as he ministered with such power. Everything in me was stirred. My faith was stirred. God wants to bless you. Go to that right now. Call the, call the number. Call the number on the screen or online. Do it right now. Listen, you've got this book also. Yes. Talk about that, will you please? This book is about 75 pages, and it will tell you how to prosper in hard times God's way. And as you plant this new beginning seed of $500, it'll be uh, Pastor Benny's gift of appreciation to you. It's gone around the world. It will touch your heart. It'll show you how to use the principles of God's Word to take you to a whole new level in your finances and in the peace of your life. 
I want to pray with you right now that the Lord will also protect you. Can we believe with yes. God's people for protection from financial harm? Yes, absolutely. Because that could come. Who knows what yes. could come in the next few years. Pray Absolutely. with them right now for that, even as they call. Father, you said in Malachi chapter 3 that yes, one Lord. of the benefits for tithing and sowing seed was you would become an enemy to our enemy. Give we pray for your divine protection around our lives yes, and Lord. those that we love, and we call in a harvest of divine protection from our seed today, according to Malachi chapter 3, in Amen, Jesus' Lord. name. Listen, if it doesn't hurt, Amen. it doesn't work. And Amen. you just share the powerful story. And it's happened to me many times. Yes. When I faced a serious financial crisis, I knew what to do, but the flesh just doesn't want to do it. Right. The, the flesh says, no, maybe God will do it another way. Or, the highest authority in heaven and earth said, give. Yes. Then he said, it shall be given unto you, good measure. Yeah. Press down and so on. And we know the promises of God are, yeah. God cannot lie. Right. A lady came to me. She said, I'm amazed that God gave me the harvest. I said, why are you so amazed? Yeah. I said, God and his word are one. Right. For God to break his promise, it would have to break him. Think about that. Think, Think about, about this. Think about that. There's more power in the words, it shall be given unto you, yes. than there is in all the universe. Yes. Those words are more powerful than anything in this life. Yes. Because Jesus said, not one dot. Right. Nothing. Think about that. The word is established forever. Praise Please God. do it now. And I'm telling you, God will do it again and again and again. And I want to pray for the sick right now because I, you stirred that anointing in me. Amen. So as your colleague, Father, Thank in Father. Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Heal those in need of healing right now. We rebuke sickness and disease yes. in Jesus' mighty yes, name Jesus. and for your glory. Listen, the greatest miracle, the greatest miracle is salvation. And, and I, yes, I'm asking you to call and sow the seed, but there's people watching that need Jesus right now. Just say, dear Jesus, I'm a sinner. Forgive my sin, Lord. Come into my heart, Savior. I give you my life. I give you my future. I give you my body as a living sacrifice. Wash me with your blood and make me whole. Live your life in me, a wonderful Redeemer. Amen and amen. Now, you call that number on the screen and let me know that you've been saved too, all right? Or just send me an email. You know, a lot of you are, are sending me emails straight to a, a special email I have just for my partners, pastorbenny at bennyhin.org. And it comes right to my phone and wow. I read it. And often, I'll just pick up the phone and call them. Wow. Yeah, it's really been fun too. I love it because it connects me with, the, you know, right. with God's people. That's wonderful. I want you to prosper. We, yes. That's why we're here. Yes. We want you to be blessed. Right. And there's only one way to be blessed. And that's when we sow seed in God's work. Exactly. Only way. That's it. That's the only promised harvest, but it's the voice he never ignores. Once the seed is in the soil, it becomes a constant intercessor to God on our behalf. That is so powerful. You keep calling, and you can do it online too, and I'll see you tomorrow for another powerful program. Love you all. Bye-bye.